It was good. We're going to say Shalom. We're going to start a video off by saying all praises to Yahweh, Basha, Yahweh Shai, Basha, Rakaku Dash. Double honor to them apostles, a great millstone. Shalom to the AQ, putting in work. We finna put in some work. We out here in Columbus, Ohio. We just gonna go in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? See what the spirit brings out. Anything you wanna go into? Oh, we just talking about Tyson Fury. I started the video off with that. Everybody seen that fight. Uh, Tyson Fury beat the brakes off of your boy Wilder. But a lot of what a lot of people don't understand, they try to turn that to a racial thing. You see that? Because really, uh, Tyson uh, Tyson Fury is an Israelite. Okay, what is he? Irish, ain't he? He's from Ireland. And he's even named after Mike Tyson. So you know what I'm saying? That's that Israelite spirit. He because you know the Irish were Israelites. That ancient name for Ireland was Hibernia. But you got a lot of Israelite groups out there. They can't accept. You know that the Irishman is actually an Israelite. Then the scriptures say that uh, one shall be stronger than the other. You know, so we should get that scripture. So we can go to the spirit, you know. So you're gonna tell if they're gonna say Tyson Fury is an Edomite, so you're gonna tell me that means that uh the Esau is stronger than Jacob? That don't even make no sense, does it? That don't make no sense at all. The Tyson Fury is an Israelite. Oh, uh, you see, he's always, always giving praise to the Lord and stuff. I remember mean, after that first fight, he gave, uh, after the fight was over, he said he wanted to, I forget exactly what he said, but he said, I want to give praises to the mighty Jesus, Lord of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Only an Israelite talk like that. Only an Israelite always going to give praise to the Most High. That's why when you see the musicians in there, even though they're wicked, but they're going to get them awards. First thing they always say, I want to give praise to the Most High. I want to thank God. Okay, that's the spirit of an Israelite. Like these athletes, they win the uh, the Super Bowl or something. They say, I want to give praise to the Most High. Oh, like your boy Tua. You know Tua, the quarterback from Alabama. <laughs> you know, he don't know no sports, but he has some Owens. But you can see the dude clearly an Israelite. You know, he's always giving praise to the Most High. But people can't understand that Israel scattered among all nations. They can't get it. What you got? Genesis 25 and uh, 25, I think. Uh, not 25. It's like a 23. And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men are the people shall be separated from thy vows. Right, it's talking about Isaac and Rebekah in the birth of Jacob and Esau. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. It said, One people shall be stronger than the other people. So Jacob, uh, Jacob was going to be stronger than Esau, okay? So that's proof right there because that's how we can tell who the Israelites are today, right? You can tell who the Israelites are. Israel is stronger than, than uh, Esau. Because, like, who, who's the top athletes in sports? The so-called black people. They, I guarantee you any sports league, what, NFL, NBA, probably 70% so-called black people. But they all Israelites. Because that's why the scripture said that uh, one shall be stronger than the other. Like, who's the best basketball players? Well, the greatest all time is all so called. Oh, there's one guy on the greatest all time list that's not a uh, so called black person. It's Larry Bird, right? And Larry Bird's still an Israelite. Really, Larry Bird's a so called black man. He's an Israelite. What you got? Yeah, but that was just the point. Because that right there proves that Tyson Fury is an Israelite. There ain't no Edomite going to get in a boxing ring and beat an Israelite. That ain't going to happen. That's why you ain't going to see no Edomite basketball team. A whole Edom, a whole basketball team of Edomites is going to beat an Israelite basketball team. It's impossible. How, what, oh, like the so-called Jews. Like them fake Jews over there in Israel, they Edomites, right? That's how you know they can't be the, uh, the Israelites of the Bible. Because the Israelites of the Bible talk about great warriors. Like King David. Okay? Like Joshua. They were great mighty warriors. And the scripture said King David killed tens of thousands. So to be a great warrior means also what? You got to be in good shape, right? You got to be an athlete. You know what I'm saying? You able to perform athletic feats. Them so-called Jews in the state of Israel, they're not known for being athletes at all. You ever see any of them fake Jews in the they, in the NBA? 
Have you ever seen a so-called Jew in the NBA? You ever see a so-called Jew playing halfback? You know what I mean? Playing quarterback? They ain't play no positions. Only position they play is the owner. They own the teams. You know what I'm saying? That's proof they're not the real Israelites because they're weak. They're weaklings. Just like the so-called white man in America is a weakling. They didn't know none of them play sports. You got, you got something to read? Exodus 1 and uh, 19. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, but they are lively and are delivered ere the uh, midwives come in unto them. Right. Because even the Israelite woman, they're more lively than the heathen women. The heathen, they're a little too lively now, shit. They're real lively now, ain't they? Who else would that be talking about? Who's got the liveliest woman on the planet? The Edomite women ain't lively. They quiet. You know what I'm saying? They don't be dancing or nothing. Who, who's the best dancers? The liveliest day. Who get a party going? The Israelites get the party going. So that's that liveliness. That's that liveliness right there. Oh, that's more proof. Who's the real Israelites? The proof is the book of Psalms. The biggest book in the Bible is the book of Psalms. Now, who makes the best music? Who on earth makes the best music? Who's known for making soul music? When you hear that word soul music, what pops in your head? The image of Israelites singing and dancing. The so-called black people singing and dancing. That's what pops in your head when you hear soul music. How come soul mu music is not equated to so-called white people? How come they're not equated as making soul music? Well, they don't have souls? Everybody knows. What is What's that joke? White people can't jump. They can't don't got no rhythm. Yeah, they made that movie, White Man Can't Jump. Now they do got rhythm, but they, they do. If they can't jump, that means they're a J. You know what I'm saying? Yep, like Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is uh, actually an Israelite. Your boy got skills. I ain't scared that people be hating on your boy Bieber. Your boy, he, he got skills, man. In the age of auto-tune, your boy can actually sing. People make fun of him. But he actually an Israelite with that kind of soul he got like that, you know? But you know a lot of people can't see it. People, they got that, they got that spirit of evil on them. They just judge people by the flesh. You know what I mean? They want to categorize everybody by skin color. <laughs> like, 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 uh, your girl married him, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, we need all the time, the leprosy situation. The so white people, they got leprosy, but Israel had leprosy too, you know what I'm saying? Even to this day, you got Israelites that have leprosy, you know what I'm saying? So, with Miriam, as soon as she got leprosy, does that mean she turned into an Edomite or whatever? You know what I'm saying? No, she was just an Israelite with leprosy. Just like she's like, an Israelite today. You can go to fucking Russia right now, you can find an Israelite right now. That's that supposedly Russian, but he's, 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 he's people go back to uh, us. You know what I'm saying? It's really simple. To, it's just simple as fuck, right? Really. People make it hard. It's fucking stupid. And they are, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, fleshy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I got scripture, uh, Matthew 5 and uh, 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its savior. Uh, it's, you know, twofold, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The salt, yeah, salt's that flavor. Go ahead. It says, uh, but the salt has lost its savior. What we should be salted. And then we we got salt, you know, like we said, rhythm and so on and so forth. But we also got the, the salt to teach his word. Nobody else can teach his word. The scripture says that uh, that the what do you say in Romans nine says that the, the service of God is given to the Israelites. So the only ones that you see really serving the Lord and really truly, honestly praising the Lord is the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? The, he was there. They don't want to call it on the name of the Lord. You don't see Edomite camps out here teaching. <laughs> exactly. Man, that's how you know we the real Israel Israelites once again. You know because Israel is the Lord's servant. And his servant's gonna do his work. That's why he created this, to be his servant. To do his to be holy. To be a holy people. He's created a special people. That's in the world, you always got one thing that's better than everything else. Like when you look at cars, you got the little regular cars, you know, the budget cars, but then you got the, the Ferraris, you know what I mean? We like the Ferraris and Lambos of the nation.
out so we can try it underfoot. And then, that was it. Oh, but like you said, we the salt of the earth. Israel's the salt. Israel got flavor. And we bring flavor to the rest of the earth. That's why the whole world loves everything we do. Our music, our culture. You know what I'm saying? And soon the whole world, they're going to bow down to us. And we're going to rule over all the nations. Sorry? Nah, I was just making a video. Oh, okay. You can talk to us if you want, though. Hi. Oh, I got to go to school, but have a nice day. Sounds okay. cool. Killed that perfume, bro. She left the cloud. Uh, she thought I was talking to her. Uh, get out. Personal, like, God damn, she's all up in your face, like, hey. hey. A little too much perfume. She probably, I ain't gonna talk too bad about it. Yeah. And hey, what you trying to cover up with that smell? It's like, I feel that smell was overpowering. It didn't even smell good. Ugh. What you got? The Deuteronomy 14 and 2 For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy God, and Yahweh have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. You say, you say one of the world crazy words, boy. We're going to look it up. Peculiar. You know, I was actually about it. I was like, I was looking at this. A dictionary this morning. I was like, I do not want to carry that. But I grabbed it anyway. Peculiar. That's a tough word to say. Peculiar. Peculiar. He said we're a peculiar people. Oh, peasantry. Peculiar. Peasant. Yeah, he called somebody a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you feel salty as fuck. Somebody call you a peasant. Yeah, uh, something about that word peasant though. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Well, I can't even find the word. Peculiar. It says unusual or eccentric, strange, queer, odd. Uh, oh, they're gonna say we're queer. It means different. But it really means holy, but look. Standing apart from others, mm. calling for special consideration or attention, distinct and particular. Isn't that Israel a distinct people? What other people on the planet that can do what we do? You know what I mean? Yes. What other nation on earth can do what Michael Jackson did? Do a moonwalk. Who else can do that? Can the Chinese do a moonwalk? You know what I mean? Can the Edomite do a moonwalk? They, yeah, they can see them do a moonwalk. Even, you know, even I can do a moonwalk. You know, if, if, <laughs> yeah. I, if I practice, I know I can do moonwalk. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that shit take time. But even, like, I can't dance. I'm, I'm going to be honest. But if, it, if it's a, 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 a right song, I can find some type of rhythm. But these people, I don't give a fuck. They've been training and dance for the whole life. They have no rhythm at all. They yeah, but you rap. play the guitar and stuff. So you pretty, get pretty good at it. And then, uh, what was about to say? oh, yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of Israelite kids get mad at us. Like, oh, you telling me a person is Israelite because he can dance and sing? It just said he's a special, a peculiar. What, 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 we all got our own place. gifts. Yeah, he said he's different from everybody. So how, how, what makes us different? But the, the main thing that makes us different ain't singing and dancing. It's that we holy people. We separated to do the work of the Most High. That's the main difference. Is our love for the Most High. That's the main difference right there. If you the Most High, you want somebody to, to sing praises to you. Would you want a heathen to sing praises to you, or somebody that can? Really oh hell sing, no! Sing and have. You know, and it's because we have that we have that soul. You sing the people when they sing, they sing with the soul and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they, they start crying when they, they sing it. They start singing honestly to the Lord. And even they just all stiff. Right. Little fucking Chinese niggas. They banging on pots and pans. Yeah. Pain, 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 pain. They all they, I've never I, they so fucking they too informal, you know what I'm saying? They, they stiff as fuck. Yeah, they stiff, bro. You know what I'm saying? They stiff. You know what I'm saying? But us, we got the spirit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't all stiff. Like, everybody, like, like, like us, we got different garments on. We got different spirits. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's the best gospel singer? Uh, I mean, you go, when you hear the word gospel music, what's the image of the person singing that pops in your mind? When you hear gospel, that means the good news. That's the Bible. What's the image of the person that pops in your mind when you hear gospel singer? What color is that image that pops in your mind? What do they look like? Just ask yourself that question. 
That's proof who the Israelites are. See, that's spiritual is what it is. That's how the truth works. Like some Sam Cook, bro. My mom was listening to some Sir, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I was sleeping on your boy, man. That's the man right there. That Sam Cook boy ain't no joke. That's an Israelite right there. Israel got that soul. It was this interview he had. Dude, in asking, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, describe to me in eight bars with, with a soul. And he just, like, hummed and shit. And that shit was beautiful, man. It was like, it was like a masterpiece, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he just can't do that. Sam Cook, Sam. Yeah. Uh, what you got? I got this, uh, Jeremiah. Uh, J uh, J uh, Jeremiah 10 and 16. The portion of Jacob, or Jacob's Israel, you know what I'm saying, is not like them, for he is the former of all things. You know what I'm saying? And Israel is the rod of his inheritance, I will post his name. And so it says he, uh, Jacob is not like the other nations. We are the former of all things. You know what I'm saying? And you look at a lot, a lot of things, you know, a lot of things we invented, you know what I'm saying? We started what? We started rock and roll and uh, Chuck Berry. Yeah. I just made a video talking about this the other day. Okay, yeah. The Israelites even started, had a hand in heavy metal. Their early days of heavy metal. Won all the music. The Israelites started all that music. Rock and roll, Chuck Berry. Okay. Hey, the father of the electric guitar. Charlie Christian. His name is Christian. It's like that. <laughs> Charlie Christian. An Israelite, so-called black man. He's known as the father of the electric guitar. Boy, it's bad on his strings. You know what I mean? So Israel, we, like in scripture, we the former of all the things. Ain't no Edomites, no Moabites or Hamites come out with all this good music. You know what I'm saying? That was all Israel. That's like, that's like, like what do you, uh, what do a lot of people think about when, they, you know, when they think about a song, like a, like a song to the Lord, they think about the book of songs, you know what I'm saying? That was written by so-called black people, you know what I'm saying? They don't think about fucking, uh, the boy, uh, the, what's that nigga name? Islam nigga, whatever, or some, 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 some other heathen. They ain't thinking about no Mitt Romney yeah. or no, uh, Bill Clinton. They be like, oh, Bill Clinton could play the saxophone. <laughs> that shit was probably dubbed. He, he probably faking it. Oh, God, you see that, you see that video with the Saudi Arabians, with, uh, no, what's the Saudi... I, was there, I know Russia came to Saudi. I think it was Saudi Arabia, and they tried to. Uh, they did. They did mix of the uh, of their Russian uh, anthem, whatever. Fuck. That shit was fucking horrible. What is this? It was like not even. It was like nothing to see. <laughs> what we? Oh shit! That's some funny shit, man. I got this scripture real quick. Exodus four twenty two. That's how saying the Pharaoh. Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So, Israel is the firstborn son. That's the, that's the, the firstborn gets the inheritance, don't they? So that's how you know Israel got that inheritance. It's the firstborn. And Israel is known as the son of the Most High. Not a heathen. That's why the New Testament speaks of the sons of the, sons of the Most High. It's talking about Israel. All them Israel stuff. I'm gonna get that Deuteronomy uh, 32. Deuteronomy 32 and uh, what is that? Eight. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of Adam, see, so the Most High separated the sons of Adam. Oh, doesn't the, the Lord say we're a holy people, right? Because the holy means to be separated. Ain't we? We're, we're we're not supposed to join. Forces with a heathen, we supposed to depart from a heathen. Who would it look like singing some heathen songs? <laughs> uh, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. See, so Jacob is the Lord's people, man. Not all these other heathen nations. The Lord only dealing with Jacob. He's only dealing with the Israelites. Oh, Israel scattered among all nations, too. 
Search on holy people and see what all the scriptures were good. Yeah, because we're supposed to be a holy people. We're the children of light. That's what uh, Paul said we are supposed to walk as children of light. Because we are holy people. Even the word Christian, that really means holy people. It means the anointed ones or the followers of the anointed ones. The word Christ comes from the word Christos, which means the anointed one. Uh, here we go. You got something? You already read this one. You already got it? Let me read a quick one real quick. This is another quick one. Exodus uh, 19 and 6. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So the children, of, uh, that says the same thing in the New Testament, don't it? When it, even the New Testament says we're supposed to be a nation, a kingdom of priests, of kings and priests, which tells you ain't nothing changed from the old to the new. Israel's still the chosen, ho the, I can't stutter. Israel's still that holy people, that chosen nation. Let me see what else we got. Actually, I typed in Holy Nation. Oh, man, I lost it. Oh, look at this. There's another one. There's a whole bunch of them. Deuteronomy 26 and 19. And to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made in praise and name and honor, that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he has spoken. Ooh. That's a fire scripture. Actually, let me keep, let me go back. I'm going to start at Deuteronomy 26 and 16. This day, the Lord thy God has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. You're supposed to be keeping the commandments. Made after dark? Yeah. Woo wee! What is it? What is it? You're a gremlin now? You eat after midnight? You gonna turn into a gremlin? Show me that scripture. This scripture says you can't eat after dark. There's a scripture that says you can't eat after dark. Really? You waste your time talking to somebody like that. He interrupted me. This day the Lord I got he can't eat after dark. What the fuck? <laughs> Where did he get this shit, man? He must have been talking about the Sabbath or something. But you can't eat on the Sabbath? What what am I I'm trying to figure out what he's talking about. What are you talking about? And shit people come up here and say, man. This see, the people are goners. Total, they're total goners. They don't know nothing. But they're experts. You're gonna to try to teach us. Oh, Jesus did away with the law. Well, you can't. Like, you can eat after dark now. What the fuck. And they wonder why we cuss. Why do you guys cuss so much? This day, the Lord that God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments, and you sh you're supposed to do the je statutes and judgments. You gonna tell me you're supposed to commit adultery and murder people? That's part of the statute. You gonna tell you, you gonna tell me it's okay to eat pork? That's against the law. You're not supposed to eat pork. Like keeping the Sabbath. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath. This day the Lord that God has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart, with all thy soul. Start right. 
When you keep the commandments, you're not supposed to keep them out of spite. You're supposed to, you want to keep the commandments. You know, that feels good to keep the commandments. If you break the commandments, you should feel like a piece of shit. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy power and to walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. Right? Y'all supposed to hearken unto the voice of the Lord. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. We already looked that up. It means to be a different, different, how do you say that word? Separate, to be separate, to be special. To be his peculiar people as he had promised and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. You're supposed to keep all his commandments. Not just a couple commandments, just the ones you like. And to make thee high, listen to what he's great. He's talking to Israel. And this is what he said. And to make thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy power as he has spoken. Ooh. That's a good scripture. So he made us high above all the nations. And, that, that, and that's all through the scripture, man. You got anything else? Let me get these two scriptures to add together. Uh, uh, let me get this Isaiah 40 first and uh, 52. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he take up the ice as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the Easter is sufficient for a burnt offering. So, yeah, so to bring out the point that all these nations, they can all call upon if they if they really did call upon Yahweh, Bishop, Nashad, or whatever, then the Lord still won't hear them. The Lord don't give a fuck about them. He said, he said, uh, he said, all in Lebanon, Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast are sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him as is nothing, and they are accounted to him less than nothing. Vanity. Damn. They less than nothing. Yeah. That's negative. That's negative. Sir. Negative value. Sir. This is an example right here where Israel called upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord hearkened. Right here it says, Second Chronicles 5 and 13, And it came even to pass as the trumpets and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahweh. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and uh, cymbals and instruments and music, to praise Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his mercy and good forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of Yahweh, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh had filled the house of God. So the Lord was so intrigued by the, the instruments and singing and whatever. So he came down and listened to the chariot. He ain't gonna do that for no evil, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're talking about that cloud, that's a chariot. Most I came out, you know, with that chariot, so called UFO, with them ships. Even unto Yahweh, but he answered them not. You know what I'm saying? Then did I beat them as a small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. So that proves right <laughs> there that the dirt. Lord. Yeah, that proves right there the Lord ain't doing these what, nations. What scripture was that? Psalms 18. Because, because a lot of people say that anybody can just call on the name of the Lord and just be saved, whatever. But he just said right here, these people are gonna call on Yahweh, and Yahweh's not gonna answer. They say he's gonna cast out as the dirt on the streets. <laughs> He called heathens less than nothing in the other scripture. Read that part. That's a fire scripture. You gotta read that one again. Since they cried for those not to save them, even unto Yahweh be this for not. And did I beat them as uh, small as the dust before the wind? I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Man, I, I typed in another, I just typed in a holy people. So many scriptures came up. It proves, you know what I mean? That Israel's, 
We're supposed to be separate and we're above all these other people. And people say, oh, you can't say that, that's racist. <laughs> but they don't understand what we're saying. They don't understand that Israel scattered among all nations. They don't understand that they might be an Israelite. They don't, they don't get it. They just want to call us racist. You're racist. But that's what the Bible says, though. So now you're saying the Bible's racist. What y'all say? They don't ever want to accept what the Bible actually says. They don't want to accept it. They got their own fake imaginary Bible that's inside their head. That it's not, that does, it's not real. Oh, well, here it is right here. But listen to this scripture. You didn't read this one already, did you? Leviticus 20 and 26. And you shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and had severed you from other people that you should be mine. Well, that's another one. How the Lord say, severed Israel from the other nations. You already read this one. It's all through the scriptures. And there's so many of them, I don't want to know which ones to read. If you got anything else, you can bring it up. I'm just trying to find that real, real, real good one, you know? It was a moment. We gotta get them scriptures out. I'm trying to think. I know it's good. thing about the scripture is it never hurts to read anything, you know? I'm not thinking Joshua or Judges. Thing as this great thing is, 
people that have been hurt like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out the midst of the fire? And, uh, and as I has heard and lived, or have God a strength to go and take them a nation from the midst of any other nation? Uh, by tribulation, temptation, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Yahweh thy like God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. So that's telling the Lord never did. The Lord, what the Lord did for us, He never did for the other nations. We're the only people that went through that. It says, But to thee it will show that thou mightest know that Yahweh he is God, there is none else besides him. Right, and all the other heathen nations, they seen what the Most High did. When it, because the Most High led Israel, you know what I'm saying, out of, out of Egypt through the Exodus, through the Red Sea. And all the other heathen nations knew about that. And they all, they knew about all the plagues Egypt got hit with. Obviously, people was talking about that. And the heathens, they was afraid because of it, you know what I mean? You see what the Most High did to Egypt? I, I was actually just listening to that this morning. I had the audio Bible. When the Most High hit him with boils, he hit the adjustment with boils. All kind of plagues hit him with boils. He hit the ass with lice. They was all getting lice. What else did he do? He turned the water to blood. The water was stinking. Couldn't even drink it. Then he made it rain uh, fire and hell on him. I mean, is that right? Fire and ice rained on him at the same time. Then after that, he hit him with the locust. The locust came through, ate every damn thing. Then eventually he killed all the firstborn sons of the, uh, the Egyptians. Like he said, who, what other what other nation did the Most High show his power for like that? The Most High don't care about these heathens. He'll give a heathen a little what do you call that? A little micro blessing every once in a while, you know. The heathens they get their little trash inheritance. But Esau is going to get uh, gen uh, genocided. Hey, look, I got this up. What did you just read? The song? Well, I was going to read this. We already read this in the Old Testament. But it's in the New Testament, too. Because we just talking about how Israel is a peculiar people. And I ran across this scripture. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. That's what we out here doing. Through the Spirit of the Lord, we call people out of that darkness into this marvelous light. And this truth is, is a marvelous light, light right here. This truth is marvelous. Knowing what we know is marvelous. But notice it said, it said the same thing as the Old Testament. Because the Lord, he told the Israelites, we already read it. He told the Israelites that they was a, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That's what he told the Israelites. And Peter said the same thing. We should just go through this psalm. Let's see this psalm right here. Ah, right, shit. Israelite scriptures. Uh, Psalm 105. And, uh, ooh, it says, uh, uh shit, 10, it says, I'm the same unto Jacob for the Lord, to Israel for everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the life of their heritage, when there were but a few men in number, yea, very few were the strangers in it, and they went from one, na from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. Suffer no man to do them wrong, yet he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for, uh, so yes, yeah, so the Lord, uh, if, if we are the Lord's children, oh, the, uh, the heathens, why the Lord kill kings for our sakes? He said, Touch not my anointed. He says, uh, Moreover, he called. For a famine upon the land, he broke the whole staff of bread. He did all that for the Israelites. He killed a whole, he destroyed a whole nation just so he can, the other, the nations could be free. That sounds racist as fuck to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
God's not racist. Everybody racist in the time. Sign. Deep inside, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got that racist inside. He <laughs> says, uh, God, God, God's not hateful. What are you talking about? Yeah, they'll say God. People will say God doesn't hate. He's all love. That's just retarded. The most high is everything. If racism exists, that means the most high created it. He created every last thing that exists in all existence that ever existed. Get the fuck out of here. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who sold for a servant whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. And to the time that his word came, the word of Yahweh tried him. Uh, and you read, uh, the king sent and loosed him, even a ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all of his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than the enemy. He made him stronger than his enemies. Yeah. Right. Remember, because Israel became so mighty and great when they was in Egypt, the Egyptians, they was getting scared. Oh, that's just how the, uh, Esau getting scared in America. That's why they got the Planned Parenthood. They trying to, they mad that they trying to refund it, you know. But that's why they have women commit abortions, you know what I mean? They breaking up the families in America. Because you see the so-called white man, the Esau, he getting afraid that he's about to lose his power. Because he see Israel coming up and he going down. Oh, like the stock market crashing 900 points this morning, boy. Whew. I was hoping that kept dropping. That would be beautiful. Oh, shit. I got another one. Oh, this is... Oh, this is fire. I'm going to just let me read the whole chapter. It's short. Psalms, oh, this is an easy one. Psalms 111, 111. That's a lot of songs in it. We said, Israel, we got that good music. Praise ye the Lord. I will sing the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all of them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious. His righteousness endure forever. He has remembered, excuse me, he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear him. Oh, you see that? He gives meat unto them that fear him. Which means, meat means a lot of things. It means food, but it goes deeper than that. He has given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Oh, remember that covenant? He has showed his people. He has showed his people. You got to emphasize that. His people. I mean, and they, they didn't say all the people. Peter is uh, Peter. Peter. Ugh. He has showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Oh, this is fire scripture. Listen, let me read that again. He has showed his people. The power of his works going back to what? That, the Exodus, plus many other occasions. Okay? All oh, like the time during, what's that? King Hezekiah, when the angel came down and it started destroying the Syrians. Pretty good. He has showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. So that, oh, I get that Revelation 2 and 26. And this goes right into that. The Lord going to give us the heritage of the heathen. I mean, is he going to give us, is he going to be unto us for uh, a heritage and a heritage? So in Revelation 2 and 26, he overcame, he that overcome it, and keep my work until the end. So he that overcome it, keep my works, doing doing the works and teaching teaching the gospel. Go ahead. To him will I give power over the nations. To him will I give power over the nations. So that's proof right there in the New Testament the Lord ain't dealing with all these nations. Because he's going to give us power over the nations. Go ahead. And we're going to rule them with a rod of iron just like we was ruling over them Canaanites in the land of Israel. Remember when uh, Joshua and the Israelites came through 
and took over the, uh, the land of Canaan and we subjugated all the people. We're going to do that again. Go ahead. Just like when King David had smitten every male and eat them. We, that's, we, it's going to happen again. Go ahead. As a vessel of God, I shall that you broke into service even as I received them, my father. Damn, so the Lord said, <laughs> he's going to break heathens to pieces. What is the other scripture you read? He's going to beat them to powder. He's going to cast them out as dirt in the street. What is the scripture in the second Ezra? It counts as a spit in a bucket or a, what is it, a spit in a vessel or something. We should get that scripture. Let me read this one again. That's a really good scripture. Look at that. I don't know it. Oh, that's that Psalm 111 and 6. It's not a song we read a lot. He has showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Oh, so it said the commandments stand fast forever and ever. So you got that clown that came up earlier. He said the commandments was done away with. We don't have to keep the commandments. That's not what the scripture said. Huh? Where are you? Oh, he's still out here? He out here. He's like a sewer rat. Uh, I don't lost my place. back to verse 8. They stand fast forever and ever done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. Oh, redemption. He sent redemption unto his people. Who's your how is a redeemer, ain't he? Oh, give me that, uh, do a cert, is that, is that Romans 11, does that say redeem? Do a, we gotta do a word search on redeem. You know what I mean? You got scripture for that? What it says? What I say to do? <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking Romans 11 but give me Romans 11 to 26 I was thinking I just got the word I wanted but that's a good one too though I was thinking I had that word redeeming it but that's still a good one it might too though Romans 11 to 26 it says so all Israel shall be saved as it's written it said all Israel shall be saved it didn't say all nations shall be saved that, well, that's in the New Testament. That's in the New Testament. That's in the book of Romans. The book of Romans is found in the New Testament. And he said, all Israel shall be saved. It didn't say that Israel done away with and all God love everybody. It said, all Israel shall be saved. Go ahead. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. There, sh there shall come out of Zion a deliverer. Go ahead. There shall turn away God on God. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So the Lord, he's going to come out of Zion and save the Israelites. And it say he's going to save all the heathens. All these heathens. That's why it says right here, oh, what is redemption? That's when you, when you turn ungodliness away somebody, forgive them of their sins. That's redemption, right? When you redeem yourself. That's why Yahweh came to the earth. He's the redeemer. Is Yahushua's name in Hebrew means he's the uh, he's the savior, he's the deliverer. He's gonna redeem us. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, Luke 1, 67 says his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and praised, uh, fucking prophesied, saying, "Let's be the Lord God of Israel, for He has visited and redeemed His people." Oh, read that again. He said he has. Oh. He said redeemed. Sorry. Let's be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has redeemed his people. Talk about Israel. Where, where are you at? Because that also somewhere where it says, yeah, I think that is the scripture I'm talking about. Because remember, uh, that goes back to, we read that last week, didn't we? Because Malachi also had, that's the quote Malachi right there, I believe. Raised up and born to salvation uh, for us in the house of the servant David. Oh, he said, oh, he said salvation for who? That's in the New Testament. He's talking about the Israelites. Read that again. That's a good one. Raised up and born to salvation for us in the house of the 
David. In the house of his servant David. He didn't say the house of Esau. You know, he said the house of his servant David. Go ahead. Right, so the Lord, is the Lord going to save us from all of our enemies and those that hate us? That's talking about the other nations. So he's saving Israel from the other nations. So why the hell would he want to save the other nations? That doesn't make no sense. He's saving us from them. Not saving them and us. He's saving us from them. Especially during that time when this was written during the Roman Empire. And, uh, you know, the, the city of, uh, well, the whole nation of Israel was getting fucked up by the Romans. They was have to pay tribute to the Romans. You know what I mean? You had, what was that one of the Rome? Uh, I ain't going to go into all the history. But the Romans was jacking us up. You got more? The oath which he swore to our father Abraham that we would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. All the days of our life, not just sometimes, not just some of the days of your life. Same story. Situation in Egypt. The Lord delivers us out of Egypt so we can, so we can, so what do you say? Uh, let my people go so they can praise me, you know what I'm saying, or serve me, some, somewhere, somewhere along those lines. So the Lord's going to do the same thing here. We can't truly serve the Lord 100% in this nation. In order to keep the law, I heard a brother say this, in order to keep the law, you gotta have uh, this, the word sovereignty, whatever the fuck that word is. You gotta have your own land. You can't keep so it's sovereignty, yeah. yeah. You can't keep the law right here. This is it's not our land. You gotta keep Esau's law. This is his land. You know what I'm saying? So for us to truly obey the law perfectly, we gotta have our own land. That's why one of the first things we was gonna do after he delivers us is sit us back in our land. <laughs> That's why land is so important. We we break the Most High's laws when you follow their laws. Like the Most High said, we're not even supposed to enter a covenant with none of these heathens. You gotta do that all the time. You can't, bro. You can't even survive without getting a uh, that like a bank card, a bank account. You gotta go sign a contract and go do business with the devil. You can't do shit without you know going to this devil. Contract to get a damn house. You gotta sign. Saying you agree not to leave whatever fuck certain time or whatever fuck, you know what I'm saying? Bullshit all together. I'm gonna go back to that Psalms 111 and finish that up. We got a couple of scriptures. Psalms 111 and 9. He sent redemption unto his people. <laughs> I just like the way that sounds. He said his people, bro. He didn't say all the people. He said redemption under... I still get excited over the truth. You know what I mean? You should be excited about the truth. When you hear them fire scriptures, we got somebody lurking back there. Oh, no. He scared me. I'm like, what's no, going I was, I was wondering, what the fuck is that? He said, ugly ass like this. Oh, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's very weird. Oh, no, you good. I thought Esau was creeping around. He back in the bushes. That's <laughs> He back in masturbating in the bushes. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Did you see that news story? No. I made a video on this. They had Catholic priests. Because they got pedophiles over the Catholic church. But they had this one priest. I guess they... Uh, he, he actually got locked up, right? For molesting children. As soon as he got out, he got caught masturbating in the bushes. Right outside of uh, uh, school. They let him out. And so, like Dave, the first day he got out, he's in the, in the bushes, jacking off by the school. What the fuck? That's the Catholic Church for you. But they gonna have the audacity come up and try to correct us. This is Psalms 111.9. He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Oh, that's the covenant that lasts forever. It's an everlasting covenant. That's a covenant that cannot be broken. Why? Because the Most High is not a man that he should lie. He, can't, he promised us he's going to keep his promise. Most High ain't going to break his promise. 
Okay, his he uh, where'd it go? He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of Yahweh, and that's his name, since it just said that. Because if you didn't know, because you always got new guys watching. When you see the word Lord in all capital letters, that means in the Hebrew text, in the Hebrew, the Most High's name is written, which is Yahweh. Y-H-W-H, okay? The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, that's, the, that's in that, that proverb. The fear of Yahweh is the be that's that's probably where they quoted that from the law. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they to do his commandments, his praise endure forever. Oh, that's fire. See, a good understanding have all they to do his commandments. So if you got people up here saying, oh, the commandments is done away with. Oh, Jesus did away with the law. But, you have you don't have good understanding. You have bad understanding. You can't you can't. What does the scripture say? Lean not unto your own understanding. That's what these fools do. They lean unto their own understanding. I was gonna look at that word redeem. See what we're gonna find. Come on, bro. Trash phone. You got anything else? You can pull it out. Well, I'm just seeing if I can find some good scripture we ain't went over in a minute. So Psalm 44. Uh, and, uh, uh, says, "Rid me and deliver me from the hand." I believe. Look, I believe it's uh, uh, one of those words. I think it's deliver. Look at the Hebrew. Pretty much the same thing as redeem, so no. Same thing. Yeah, it's uh, same. Rid me and deliver me. Means like a buy back. Yeah. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. The strange children talking about the heathens because they're, you know, they're strangers, you know what I'm saying? It says from the hand, uh, hand of the strange children whose mouth says that's that's the way you're supposed to pray right there. You're not supposed to pray to the Lord for all things. Should call it equality, whatever, for all the races, and genders, whatever. The fuck, you're supposed to pray the Lord deliver you from the hands of the enemies, from from the strange, from the heathens. Goddamn, that's us. He put his plainly. Oh, I got. You. That's the spirit. Go ahead. Mouth speak of vanity, and the right hand is the right hand of falsehood. The right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Right. That means the right hand represents righteous. Maybe they pretending to be righteous. You know what I'm saying? That's good. You're talking about that prayer uh, and what you're supposed to be praying for. Right? You're supposed to be praying it for the kingdom, ultimately. Just like the Lord's Prayer said, too, you're supposed to pray the Lord forgive you, saves you and your brothers. I want to read all of this, man. No, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to do that. Nehemiah, this is Nehemiah 1 and 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words. I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the Most High of Heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, a God of Heaven, the great and terrible power that keep the covenant mercy for them that love and observe His commandments. Going back to the commandments. See, the Lord has mercy to them that love and keep His commandments. Okay? Like we were saying earlier, you can't keep all the commandments. But you still afraid, you know what I mean? When you knowingly break a commandment, you you scared. That's the spirit you're supposed to be in. So look, let thine ear now be attentive. I'll, yeah, I'll let y'all's ears be attentive. People don't have an attentive, they don't listen to shit. But let thine ear be attentive. <laughs> These motherfuckers, man. Oh, well. Let now, oh my goodness, I'm messing up now. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, 
which we have sins against thee, both I and my father's house of sin. So he's praying for his sins and his brother's sins, right? We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad the nations. There goes the scattering of Israel. Because we Israel, we get the Lord scattered us among all these nations as a punishment because we didn't keep his commandments. But, but if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though that though there were of you cast into the utmost parts of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will I bring them unto the place I have chosen to set my name there. Now here it is. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. I might keep going. That's a good scripture. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant, this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, uh, for I was the king's cupbearer. But that's going back to them coming back out of captivity and all that. But that's the prayer we praying. You know what I mean? Praying to the Lord, hear our prayers. And it saves Israel. But that's what's going to happen. We out here, this, this is part of the sifting of Israel among all nations is by coming out here doing this work, man. This word's going across the whole earth. We come out here teaching on the streets. Plus, we always making videos that go on the internet, and everybody around the whole world is getting this truth. So if you don't like it, it don't matter. You know what I mean? And the truth is getting out. And those who are supposed to receive it, they receive it. He do get disgusted when I said that. He looked at me like, ugh. It's a weird spot downtown. Yeah, it's alright. I know it's like more people down here than down there. More spaces too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, and he's saying the same thing right here that this prayer said. Didn't it? What did this prayer just say? He was praying for Israel that the Lord forgive their sins and bring them from all the nations they were scattered. Read that again. Well, that's just amazing how, how the, the old and the new is all the same. To Israel is that Israel might be saved. How can he just say, oh, my prayer to God is that the Edomites might be saved and that the Hamites might be saved? You dumbass Christians, man, y'all never get it. You're never going to get it. There'd be a couple of them to wake up because a lot of brothers in the truth came out of the church. But you are, look, you see a whole lot of brothers coming out of the churches into the truth doing what we, we do. But how many of us do you see go back to the church? Very few, right? I'm sure it happens. It happens, but not very often. Because, man, we know what y'all churches is teaching us some bullshit, man. We know that. I and mean, the real ones can see it. Obviously. I shouldn't have to explain that shit. It's like, bro, I knew ever since I was a little kid, I was in the churches. I grew up in the churches. Back when I was in there, I was like, this is some bullshit. They can't answer none of my questions. I was asking Pastor all the questions. He's a black guy, boy, that boy. This a... I asked him a question on Revelation. He said, boy, the Lord had put a seal on the book of Revelation. He said, we can't understand it.
I grew up in the church, man. I know that y'all are full of shit, and I know the church is some boring ass shit. You don't learn nothing. They'd rather have a big lavish meal over a Bible study, you know what I mean? Over a real Bible. They more, that's just, really the church is enough more than a, a community center. That's all that shit is. A community center. That's all a church is. You go there to hang out, drink coffee, eat donuts, eat cookies, say hi to grandma. That's all you do at church. The Lord ain't nowhere up in there. Would you, would you probably get that, uh, would you get, yeah. Uh, 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 there were as fed horses in the morning, every one night after his neighbor's wife, uh, so that, let me see, we got skipped. Yo, yeah, 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 uh, shall is uh, Jeremiah 5 and 7 says, Shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. Oh, when I had fed them, they, they, they have forsaken the Lord. Like the Christians, y'all forsaken the Lord, you forsaken his covenant. You always want to talk about that covenant, but that holy covenant is forever. You cast aside the law and everything. They'll say that the, the Lord's holy people. You say the Israelites is done away with. They say the old test. They pretty much saying the covenant's done away with. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. That's but I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's what you got? Right there. Oh, I can't even look at it. That's yours. I can't. I'm not even looking at it. That's adultery. Oh uh, shit. It says uh. uh let's see where's that? Uh, when I have fed them to a full, they, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in their harlot houses. That's what churches is a, uh, but it's a harlot house. The Bible called it a harlot house, a whole house. You go up in that bitch, it smell like a whole house. Bitch is wearing all that stinking ass perfume. You know what I mean? Don't nobody in the church act like they supposed to be acting. Man, we about to get on these hoes, man. Let's go to, uh, we're going to do a, uh, now get on the hoes, we're going to get on the church. Uh, you going to finish that first? Oh, yeah. I was just thinking, because the churches, when you go to a church, everything's opposite of the Bible. Everything is opposite. It's opposite. The Bible said, do this. They say, now nah, we're going to do this. Get that second Timothy. Is that second Timothy? Two or three Timothy? Oh, no. Uh, I get my Timothy's mixed up now. The one where they talk about the woman. What's that? First Timothy. Second. Second? That's first. Yeah. You get confused sometimes. Hey, you ain't gonna claim that one, though. That's a hungry, hungry hippo, boy. It says, first. That thing is big, boy. I don't know, man. I don't know. It got some shape to it. It's like, nah. Uh, I don't know about that one right here. Uh, I'm taking clothes off. She wears some tight ass pants. That's the thing about you women, man. All these women, y'all think you're fucking some goddamn porno store or something. You got 300 pound bitches walking down the street with some tight ass pants, thinking she's got a nice figure. Yeah. I can see every, everything. Those aren't even dimples. Those are what are the, those are fat wrinkles. You know, those are what are those? What do you call that cottage cheese leg? You can see it through your pants. That's gross. Fuck out of here. What you got? It says uh, in like uh, first Timothy two and nine. It says in like manner also that women adore themselves in modest apparel. Right, because we talking about the churches, right? First of all. The women are supposed to adorn themselves with modest apparel. We just talking about how the women walking, uh, you know, they wear them tight pants. They, they always showing their breasts. But when you go up in the church, it's even worse. Now they busting out their best clothes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I said, you go into the church, it smells like a whorehouse. They wearing gallons of perfume. They don't spray. You know what I mean? They just drench themselves in perfume before they go. They they they. 
bring out a uh, <laughs> they paint you know two inches of makeup on their face but they say you're supposed to wear modest apparel go ahead yeah they, they don't go modest shit it's a like woman she got she go up in the church with the gucci bags she, if she could afford it she'll have to she had the fake gucci you know what i mean did you see Everything got to be top notch, not modest. That's not modest. Go ahead. Embroidered hair. It said without embroidered hair. You go to these women up in the church, they have all the hairstyles. Half of them wearing goddamn weeds. Go ahead. So the costly array, array it's like it's But they got all got the costly array. They got you go over to churches. The women and the men, they wearing Rolexes. I mean, the women, they got all the diamond earrings. They got, they wearing like 30 bracelets on each arm. You know how the Israelite woman do it. Got 30 bracelets on each arm. Got her two rings on each finger. You know what I'm saying? Gold necklaces, diamond necklaces, crazy earrings all over the place. How, like I said, the churches do everything opposite of the Bible. And they call you the devil when you call them, you know what I mean? If you say something about it, you're the devil. You're the, you know what I mean? You got more to that? says, but it's becoming women professing godliness with good works 